Did you know that there are some skills that your kids need in order to just function as a human? I know this sounds so crazy because you're like, uh, not a big deal. But actually, these skills have been linked to reading comprehension, writing, math computation, science, and more. Curious what they are? They are called executive functioning skills or executive skills or even life skills. The big terminology for it, executive skills, are the types of things that kiddos and adults both need in order to just function as humans. These are mental skills that all humans need to know in order to function within like society. So there are seven skills that we are going to talk about and how you can teach, support, and encourage your kiddos in your home. The first executive skill is called planning. And planning is really just kind of putting tasks into place. So planning is how you approach a task and how you put steps into place. This is huge and I know that there are so many adults that still have struggles with putting steps into place for starting. I mean, let's talk about organizing and figuring out how to put things away in your home. This is a planning skill. This is an executive skill that you and your child could both do together. Organization. Again, my favorite executive skill. It is all about how you kind of plan and tidy your space. Cognitive flexibility, which is all about problem solving. Again, that does go into organizing and planning. You need that flexible thinking in order to figure out where things go, how you should structure your plans. Working memory, remembering information that you had just heard, read, or seen. Impulse control, the ability to regulate yourself, your body, your thoughts. Social understanding, the ability to view or imagine others' thoughts and feelings. And time management, how you use your time. Okay, so these seven skills are all things that everyone benefits from when they are taught and they are able to be built upon. Because let's face it, a toddler and a high schooler are not going to have the same time management skills. So these are things that we need to build and teach. So how do we do this? I've seen some arguments I disagree with that homework teaches time management. I don't agree. If you want to teach time management, then you need to teach it within the constructs of the school day. If you don't get your work done, then you have to do it at home, but not giving additional work to teach time management. Another argument I have heard that I disagree with is that can calendaring is a skill that students need to have and master, and they've used those in special education a lot as like a big push for teaching calendaring skills. But here's the deal. Not every kid is going to benefit from paper, pencil, calendar. Some kids are gonna need the digital, the electronic, and by pushing that narrative is a really big issue I personally have, is I've seen the plethora of kiddos with special needs. I've seen the spectrum of kiddos with neurodivergence and just neurotypical, uh, all benefiting from a variety of ways in which to plan and structure how you're going to get your work done. And it doesn't always look the same for every kid. So by filling out a weekly planner is not the best use of your planning time. And there are some other ways in which you can teach planning that does not involve a planner that has to be just copied and pasted. My personal opinion, I'm feisty on this one, aren't I? So in order to figure out what executive skills your kiddos could benefit from some teaching, maybe use some extra supports, I created the Executive Skills for Kids workbook. So this workbook really walks you through every one of the seven executive functioning skills. It breaks down the strategies you can use to teach and support those particular skills along with printables, checklists, flow charts, um, graph paper, all the things. So we're going to take a peek inside the Executive Skills for Kids workbook and how you can use this in your home to support your kiddos. 
So I printed mine and bundled it. I do this a lot for speaking engagements that I have on this particular topic. So if you're interested in having me come speak to your parenting group about executive skills for kids, I'm happy to do so. You could do that below where you're watching this video. So inside, we have our table of contents. We start with what are executive skills. It's a bigger overview of what these skills are. Setting the groundwork, we really need to know what skills your kiddos understand and what skills your kiddos need extra support with. Breaking down every single one of the executive skills and how you can teach it at home. And then some additional resources that may benefit you as you kind of go through the executive skills with your kiddos. So after the overview, we go into setting the groundwork. So I have just a very loose rubric for these skills and for you to kind of gauge where your kiddos fall. So I'm going to read them for you and this is a loose rubric. There are actual rubrics for executive skills. This one is just for your personal use. You should not go into school and say, oh my gosh, my kid is low on every single one of these. This is a you rubric for you in your home and how you can use these skills and where to start teaching these skills. Just wanna make that clear. I don't want anybody thinking like this is a um, you know professional grade test. This is just a really loose rubric so you know where to start. Okay, so we have all seven executive skills on the left side. Then you have your baseline in the middle. You kind of check off, is your kid high level or low level? It doesn't mean anything's wrong, it's just where are we starting? That's the whole point of this. We just wanna know where to start. So for planning, for example, the baseline is follows logical steps in order to complete a task. Now, this is where you have to use the age of your kid as your baseline. Because when I say follows logical steps in order to complete a task, for a toddler, that could be one step. For an elementary school kid, that could be two to three steps. High school, that could be a substantial amount of steps that they have to fill or finish or work towards. So you have to look at the age of your kid. Can they follow multi-step directions? Yes or no? Yes? Okay, so they may be high level. Your planning might have to look different than some of the baseline basic levels, or we might need to start with two-step instruction for my kiddo based on this. Again, this is why it's just a general rubric. Organization, able to arrange materials in an orderly manner. High level, low level. This one is on you. Can your kiddo group like items together? Cars, trucks, or do they just throw everything all in one space? And then this also as adults, some of this might be tough on us because as you're going through this rubric, you might be like, oh my gosh, I'm low on this one. I might need some extra support and resources, and that's okay. These are skills that grow with us as we grow, and sometimes they aren't always taught. So we are gonna have to teach ourselves how to do this and then support our kids in the same process. So this goes through all seven, so you can get an idea of where your kiddo stands. Then we go into how to teach them at home. They are broken down based on all of the topics. So we start with planning. The reason why we start with planning and organizing, those are the two bigger concepts that I feel are a little easier to grasp as adults. Um, they are a little more concrete than some of the other concepts. Planning can look like goal planning which I personally love. I think it is so motivational to kids and it's really concrete. What is your goal? What would you like to accomplish? And then structure it so that they can mark it complete. I'm using an example from my daughter. She wants to get her splits, like she's been working on her splits. So her goal is to do, like to, mat, to actually do the splits. 
So the plan is she practices doing those splits every day for 10 seconds on each side. That's been her little plan. And then she checks it off. We have a little checklist for her to habit tracking. And then did she meet her goal? Goal planning is one of my favorite things. I think it really helps kiddos figure out everything and like it's really concrete. So I have goal planning in here. Another strategy for younger kids, it's a thing called plan do review. And I love this process because it really walks the kiddos, young kiddos through the process of planning, taking action, and then sharing if they completed that action. So I've made a graphic for this. You can also just verbally talk it out depending on the age of your kid. So you write your goal or the plan. What are you going to do? I am going to play with blocks. Okay, play with blocks. What is the plan? Plan is I'm gonna build this, I'm gonna build a ramp, I'm going to knock it down. Okay, so that's your plan. And then we check off each step in the do section as you do the work. Then we can review, did you do it or did you not finish? Which one is it? This strategy also helps if you know you have to leave and go somewhere. Okay, we are going to be leaving in 15 minutes. What is your plan before that 15 minutes? Okay, you want to you know, play, or before we have to pack up, let's say before we have to pack up. Okay, you have 15 minutes, what are you, what are you going, what's your plan? What are you going to do? Okay, you want to play with your trucks. Perfect, so you're gonna play with your trucks and then do you have a game or anything you want to do? Yes, I want to, then I want to make a ramp and I'm going to set up a town for my trucks. Wonderful. So then 15 minutes comes. Okay, we're going to check what did you do from your plan? Maybe you didn't do anything from your plan and that's okay too. Then we start not finished because we're not done yet. Would we like to work on this when we get back? Fabulous, it's already written down or we verbally talked about it. We have a plan and so now we know what we need to do again. This walking through plan, do, review helps support kids through the entire planning stages. Um, I have more goal setting planners in here as well because I'm a big fan of goal setting. I think it's a really easy strategy to teach planning. Organization is the next category and it is my favorite topic, obviously. Now with organizing, there is a lot that can kind of go into this. So I'm going to break down some of those strategies for you. So the first is called a concept web. Concept webs are great for visual kiddos. I have always loved this type of thing. What goes in the middle is the thought, the idea, whatever, and then you web out different um, sub ideas underneath those, okay? So we're going to say organizing clothes goes in the middle web. So now each one of these is a type of clothing that your child has. T-shirts, shorts, pants, uh, socks, underwear, whatever, and you write all of those things down, all of them, so that they can see all of the different categories that they have for that one big category. These are all the subcategories. Then you can start grouping the clothing into each of these subcategories because you've taken the time to map out your thoughts on how you're going to organize. Another way to organize your tasks is to create sentence strips with um, different steps or tasks that you are planning on doing. See, they all intertwine, planning, organizing, they all go together. When you are organizing, you are setting up a structure. So thinking of things like eat a snack, play a game, do homework, read a book, empty backpack, get dinner, all of those things, your kiddo can decide what order they want to put them in so that they can organize their after school activities. They can organize right before nap. They can set themselves up for success by creating a routine or a system for themselves and then you write it down on a sentence strip or in the Executive Skills for Kids workbook, we have this broken down. 
I have a few other games on how to teach organizing also listed inside the Executive Skills for Kids workbook that um, you will get access to inside the workbook. Cognitive flexibility. Okay, this multi-step directions is huge for cognitive flexibility. It again goes back to the sentence strips because cognitive flexibility also goes into how you move through a task, which is huge. Have you noticed yourself like getting stuck in the middle of a task? Like, okay, well, it has to go this particular way, or maybe I don't know what to do next. That goes into cognitive flexibility and how you work through tasks. So using things like multi-step directions with visuals, games like Simon Says, Red Rover, Red Rover, or even just basic checklists are all ways to increase cognitive flexibility. So based on where your kiddo is, some of these activities and supports would benefit your kid in your home. So using what you know and the really loose rubric that I gave you in the beginning, remember it's not standardized, it's just a general idea. You're going to figure out what part or what piece your kiddo needs more support with. Working memory. These are things like guess who, uno, concentration. Those are all great games to support working memory. Also using a strategy called think aloud where you kind of walk through the process of how you're going to complete a task. Again, like I told you before, all of these skills kind of are intertwined, which sometimes people group together with less numbers of executive skills and sometimes they add more. They all are fluid within each other. So you can do a think aloud where you walk through the exact steps of how you thought through a problem. Let me give you an example, because since all of these are intertwined, I'm gonna use organizing as an example. So your child just did the concept web of organizing their clothes. We came up with all of the different categories of clothing, and now they don't know what to do. Oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. I can't figure out the next step. So you're going to ask if they want you to think and share your process. You're not telling them what to do. You're sharing how you would do it if you were in their shoes. So you would say, okay, well, I think I would start with the easiest grouping and that would be underwear because they're all the same. So I would take underwear and I would put it in a drawer. Now, which drawer do you think would make the most sense? Would the bottom drawer or the top drawer? And you're really walking through how you think through organizing your clothes. And you go through, you give one example and then see if the kiddo needs any other support after that. If they don't, let them go and see how they kind of like move through the task and if they are starting to create this flexible thinking in which they can move through different tasks with ease. Recipes are another great example. I have been baking with my kiddos at a very young age and I encourage everyone to do that as well. You can write down the recipe, make it super simple. There are cookbooks for kids, you can get at your library. There are tons of recipes online. Find recipes that they can do and that they can walk themselves through because that's going to create this cognitive flexible thinking that will support them for all of the skills. Weekly routines also help because they know what comes next. And so creating these type of routines is really going to benefit your kiddo. For older kids, flowcharts are my favorite. So flowcharts are basically like, okay, you follow the path. So let's say we start here. Okay, it says start here on the flowchart. Do I have homework? Yes or no? So no, I don't have homework. So then I can go over here. Do I have an activity? No. Other things I can do. Play with friends, play by myself, read a book. Like those are things that they can do. If they say yes, get homework out of backpack, start working on homework, put finished homework back in backpack. This flow chart walks the kids through the thought process of what do I have to do and how do I need to get them accomplished. So impulse control, and like at its core, it's about ignoring distraction and reducing temptation. 
So there's so many things that can go into this and it is, this one is a tough one and I feel like everyone can benefit from some of these strategies that we can put into place in the home. The first one is setting rules and expectations. I've talked about this so many times. You need to be explicit with the rules and the expectations. Your kiddos get these at school. They are written down, they are posted everywhere. They know what is expected of them at school. Do you do the same at home? If you are noticing in the playroom, your kids are throwing toys, they are hitting each other, jumping off of things, doing all the things that they shouldn't be doing in the living room instead of the basement or the playroom or the whatever, then start setting expectations and rules for that space. Also, if you're struggling with chores, setting responsibilities for every single person in the household. What is this person responsible for? What is that person responsible for? When you start writing it down, you will be able to see who's doing what jobs, what things can be taken off of your plate, what can the kids handle, what can other people handle, and you do this for everyone in the household. That way every single person sees that they are a member of this family and in order for this family to function, everyone has their own responsibilities they have to do. For really young kids, for me, when my kids were really young, I expected no toys on the floor when they went to bed. I expected that they clean up their toys at the end of the night. When they were, like my daughter was two, she had to clean up a bin. Um, and then as it started to get older, put your plate by the sink. Now my son and daughter have to put their plates in the dishwasher. And so you, jet, you gradually grow as they grow, but you start with small things. Okay, my toddler, you are responsible for these things. You are responsible for putting your food in the dishwasher. Why not? By doing all of these things, slowly and then building up, your child or children will be able to do more and more tasks without as much complaint. Like, let's be honest, there's always gonna be a little, but like, if we can reduce the like whining by like a ton, that would be super helpful, right? And then tying in with what everybody's responsibilities is, is social awareness. And this piece goes in with like having a family meeting, writing down what everyone has for the week, what's due, what's not due, when is mom available, when is dad available, when are the kids available, when is their downtime, when is their screen time, what it needs to happen in order for you know us to function as a family. And by holding these family meetings, everyone is going to be aware of all the other people in the family. So you're creating this social awareness for your home. And then finally, time management. I personally am a huge fan of task sheets. I think they work wonders for estimating how long something's going to happen. So you write down a task, let's say it's clean up the kitchen. I know typically I can clean up the kitchen in 15 minutes. And by seeing that 15 minutes is like an estimated time, it makes the process less scary. I stop building it up in my head about how long this is going to take. Sometimes it's like the silly things that we work ourselves up about. If you have to make an appointment, you keep putting it off, you keep putting it off because you're like, oh my God, it's gonna take me all day. It takes 10 minutes. But when you see that estimated time, it reduces the stress and anxiety of how long the task is going to take. This is the same for your kiddos. If they see like, okay, I need you to clean your room, 15 minutes. I need you to practice guitar, 10 minutes. I need you to, um, you know, whatever it is, estimated time. It's not going to be as overwhelming because they see the end time. Oh, that's not an hour, that's only whatever. It reduces things so drastically that it's going to help you immensely. So there are also some resources that I am a big fan of and they are included at the end of the Executive Skills for Kids workbook. These resources are things like visual timers and different ways to ensure that all of these different skills will be utilized in your home. You can grab the Executive Skills for Kids workbook wherever you're watching this video. Use the self-assessment to get a gauge of where to start with the kiddos. Let's say you're noticing their time management is really in need of some support. 
Use the strategies inside the workbook for time management and support your kiddo based on what they need. Each section gives you specific examples for how you can do those types of things. Maybe your kiddo needs some support with organizing. There are games to play. Maybe cognitive flexibility. Again, more games, more strategies. Use what you know will work with your kiddos. And if you're looking for even more support, make sure to click the link below and I am happy to create customized plans for you and your family. Love what you see? Don't forget to subscribe. New videos every Wednesday.